Danny is back with some interesting advice <laughs> on places to check out. Okay, I'm curious about this one yeah. because it has to do with Egypt. Yes. And we were doing the Egypt dance just a little while ago. Okay, well, you are the person who gets to check out all these amazing places. Uh, I feel so lucky to be able to do that. Oh my <laughs> yeah. goodness, have you been to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science yet? I have not. I've seen it and I'm like, <laughs> I gotta go there. You do, you really do. So I used to go there as a kid all the time with my grandpa. It was so Aww. much fun for me. I know, so amazing. And they used to actually have an exhibit there about the pharaohs so awesome but now they have an entire exhibit about Egypt and that's thousands of years of history so cool and that of course is compared wow. to our history which yeah. is only a few hundred years amazing I'm sure there's so much to learn there so much to learn and actually Claudia I want you to pay attention to this story because our photographer Adam Evans may have lost a dollar during the <laughs> filming of this story so guys see if you can spot it a little bit of Egypt in Denver. And this is from 350 objects that have come from all over the world to tell you the story, the sweeping story of 5,000 years of Egyptian history. We've taken the themes of geography and landscape, the themes of gods and religion, the themes of scripture and Pharaoh, and finally my favorite, the theme of death. I love death, one, because it's universal, um, and cultures manifest it in such a variety of ways that speaks to their beliefs and their ideas and their religion, and I think it's a deeply insightful uh, window into their worldview. This is the Lady of Takar, who is a high-status woman who lived in the 25th dynasty about 2,700 years ago, and her body was mummified really well, really, really well, and this is why she's in such good condition. And she's never been uh, unwrapped, but they have done modern 21st century archaeology on her to do these 3D scans so we can see what her skeleton looks like, so we can reconstruct her face. Um, they can do analysis of what was buried with her and how her organs were removed from with the blade of a basidian knife that would have cut across her abdomen and her organs removed and put into those canopic jars right there. Ancient Egyptians wanted their name never to be off the lips of, of their descendants and they wanted to live in eternity with Ra, with the sun god, who rises and sets forever. And so in some ways, this is an homage to them that we are telling her story and we are saying her name. And that uh, is, is something that is, is a positive effect for, for an ancient Egyptian in the afterlife. There's so many amazing things you can see in this exhibit, you guys, like the tomb of Senegem. I'm standing in it right now. This is so incredible. We see depictions here, everything from prayers and revenants all here to the gods that they prayed to, to how successful they were in their life. And then, of course, the afterlife and that what they want to bring into the afterlife, whether it is their cattle, their wheat, their dogs, their wife. It's incredible what you can learn here at this exhibit. Nothing beats seeing the real thing, and whether you see the real thing in Egypt or you get to see the real thing at the museum, it's something that an ancient Egyptian held, built, thought about, looked at, interacted with in their daily life, and that brings it all straight home for me. So there's nothing that beats, beats the real thing. I think that's probably a thing for a Coca-Cola advertisement in the 1980s. A side note, I'm sorry. Cut that out, Adam. I'll give you a dollar. Egyptology is its own, its own specialization within archaeology, and, th and there's many reasons for it, but one is the complexity and the duration of the civilization. You might study the Hittites and you've got, uh, you know, 500 years of history. You might study American history, 250 years. You study Egyptian history, it's 3,000 and more plus years of history that you have to, to have an expertise about. And so it really helps to be able to go and see these things, to get a sense of just how long and how durable and how um, enduring the culture was. I think Egypt resonates with us and I think it does for a variety of reasons. One, because it's so ancient and yet we know so much about them because of hieroglyphs. One, because it's really relevant. I get her story as a woman being Pharaoh. That resonates with me and that has parallels with modernity. But also they're ever so slightly 
mysterious and, and, and distant and foreign in a way that's compelling because we want to know more. We get it, but we want to know more. And I think that's why Egypt is absolutely compelling to a modern scholar or just a modern citizen who's, who's curious about the past. One of the strengths of this exhibit is its artifacts and the artifacts that, that tell the story of a commoner and tell the story of a pharaoh and everything in between. And, and I think nothing beats, nothing beats an object that's come here. And it's such an expensive endeavor to c take care of an object and make sure that the lighting on it is right, that it's stable, that no one's going to knock into it, that the humidity and the temperature are controlled so they, nothing happens to it. It's, it's such a gift that we're able to sort of have the resources to bring these here that I, I can't imagine not taking advantage of it. That sounded more forceful than I meant it to, but um, it's hard to get to Egypt. It's a really hard travel experience to do, and, and we've saved, we've cut that out for you, and you can come right here and see it. Yay, totally caught the whole Adam Dollar thing. Well, check out the latest exhibit at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, Egypt, the time of the pharaohs. And these relics will be on display through September the 5th. Get your tickets at dmns.org.